here from Tennessee Homestead. Uh, this is one of those, uh, how the heck are you today? Me, not so great. Uh, sinuses, terrible. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, I always told you folks that when I screw something up, I'm going to be stepping out there and letting you know, hey, I, I screwed that up. And uh, that's where I'm at right now with this video that I just took down um, a day or so ago uh, on the uh, GMO versus common sense. And that is basically because as I got out and did my research, I found out that this gentleman that uh, I had that conversation with was no GMO expert. Uh, matter of fact, knew less about it than I did, which is really scary because at that point in time, I'd just done some cursory, you know, glanced over it kind of thing. Uh, anyway, uh, this guy was full of beans. Uh, turns out he was a salesman for a large uh, seed producing company. And I guess what he didn't know for a fact, he filled in with BS. Uh, so the, <laughs> this plant in Jamaica outside the rum distillers and all that was just pure nonsense. Okay. And so uh, I'm wanting to get that clarified today. I did take that down. If you've linked into it with any other social media, you might as well go take those links down because there's nothing there. Um, if you saved it, uh, I'd delete it because you're passing out bad information. Uh, it is nothing that that man had to say on where this stuff come from and the gene that was used in creating it. Uh, none of it was correct. Okay. So, no, yeah, I'd lose all that. <laughs> but I am today going to tell you uh, correct that information as far as where did this come from and what is it? Uh, the, these crops were genetically modified utilizing whatever particular crop they were trying to modify and also a, uh, little bacteria, a gene from a little bacteria. Um, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. I'll put down below here. Uh, a link that can get you some information on it. Uh, it's you know, got this mile long name, and if I even tried to pronounce it, it'd be wrong. So instead of doing that, I'll just provide a link with the correct spelling and, and <laughs> all that. Um, but basically, uh, this little bacteria, a little microorganism, has been used as a pesticide, an organic pesticide. Uh, since probably 1958, somewhere along in there. Uh, it is a very safe pesticide. It truly is. Uh, primarily because this is sprayed on crops, uh, and this little bacterium uh, will control certain bugs. Uh, you have to get the formula for each specific uh, set of bugs that you want to control. Uh, it only works... Uh, while they're in the larva stage. And it has a very short life, very short life. Uh, and what it is, is this little uh, uh, microorganism, uh, one of those little fascinating ones, that uh, crawls up on a plant, uh, gets eaten by a bug, and once it has done that, then it decides to reproduce. And to reproduce, it splits. Uh, becomes a male and a female uh, sort of thing. And in that process, it creates a protein, a little crystal, uh, that is a little time bomb. There's just no other way to describe it. And once it produces its spores, this time bomb goes off, and it blows a hole in the in intestinal tract or stomach of the host insect killing it, and allows those spores to get back into the soil and develop and become new bacteria. Uh, but here again, very short lifespan on this thing. Uh, Mother Nature has installed enough safeguards on this to where uh, things like sunlight kills it. Uh, rainwater washes it back into the soil, never gets the opportunity to reproduce. So it's a pretty... Uh, it, it, it's not anything that's going to spread hugely throughout the world. Um, it's found about everywhere, but uh, like I said, it's not a, a threat to nature or anything of that nature, and it is also used a lot in organic farming. Um, it's called BT pesticide. 
Uh, matter of fact, a lot of you have used it if you've ever used a pesticide to get rid of like tomato uh, worms and things of that nature. That was probably a BT product, hopefully. Uh, other, other the, the pure chemical uh, ones, they, you know, they, they leave residues on your food and you know, don't necessarily always come off or they can be absorbed into the ground and absorbed by the plant and things of this nature where with the BT pesticides, that's not gonna happen. So it's a good organic pesticide. All that being said, <laughs> okay, this is the gene they decided to use. Now, BT pesticide has went through years and years and years and years and years of testing and research to see if it was harmful to uh, humans, and it was not. Uh, primarily because the quantities that you, you ingest uh, normally of this product are, are going to be pr pretty minimal because if you wash your veggies, there's going to be none of the residue left on it. The mere fact that uh, the protein that does the damage uh, breaks down in, in a very short period of time, so therefore it's no longer active. But they've even given people doses of this stuff to see how uh, it, it affected them. And uh, on short-term research, they found zero effect on, on humans. Okay, pretty safe stuff. Now you get into, they have taken a gene from that uh, microorganism. The gene that they found creates this protein crystal. And they've put it in uh, crops. And thus making the insect resistant crops. Uh, number one, they're insect resistant to a wide variety, a very wide variety of insects, which means they have tampered with that gene to start with. Uh, you know, it's not the normal BT, plain BT gene, because like I said, each different microorganism targets a different insect depending on its environment that it came out of. Uh, the ones that are being used for GMO crops uh, cover a broad spectrum of insects. That's not good, okay, because that tells you not only are they tampering with the plant's DNA and, and genes, they've tampered with that microorganism's plants and genes. So, here's the big difference, folks, okay? That little microorganism, when it goes to breed once in its little lifetime, uh, it puts out one of those crystals, one. So even if you should have the misfortune of plucking a plant and sticking it in your mouth right after that happened and got one of those live crystals, number one, it's gonna mean you ate the bug. <laughs> okay, <laughs> careful with all that. But it also means that you've got this little crystal in you that is gonna pass right through your system. Uh, and even if it goes off, it's gonna do you relatively no damage. Okay, not a big deal. In the GMO crop, it becomes a different scenario. Uh, here's one for you to go research. How many gene or how many cells make up a kernel of corn? Okay, because let me explain something to you. The BT crop, not only is the fruit uh, affected by this BT gene, Every part of that plant is affected by that BT gene. Its roots, its stalk, its foliage, its fruit, and its pollen, folks, uh, with a gene that is extremely deadly to insects. Wonder where our bees went? Think about that one for a minute. And the difference between that little BT microorganism and your BT uh, crops is every cell Every cell in that plant has a time bomb, just waiting for somebody to eat it. And once it gets inside an intestine and, and, and in the right environment, that little time bomb's gonna go off. Think about that one. Uh, well, did we get leaky gut syndrome? <laughs> Think about that a little bit. Okay, so that is basically where the BT gene comes from. Uh, this is where they got it, a little microorganism. Uh, two different, you know, when you're looking at uh, plants and microorganisms merging, 
that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, a plant might have, a, a, you know, most plants don't even have microorganisms in their system because they don't have stuff like digestive tracts and things of this nature. Uh, but I'm no biochemist, so there might be some little bug flying around inside of uh, plants that I'm unaware of. So don't take that as gospel. Uh, but that's where the BT gene comes from. Uh, my apology to you on making that video. I probably should have done my research before I even put that out there. Uh, but I figured, and I tried to put the disclaimer out, as I'm no expert, I don't know that much about GMO, and I don't know what this guy's credentials are for real, you know, for sure. I was told that he knew uh, about everything there was to know about GMO. That turned out to be false. And uh, the gentleman, you know, was uh, was full of beans, okay? So, like I said, I took that down. So if you've got it linked up somewhere, you know, you might want to go pull that link because you're probably not getting anything. Uh, and that is where the BT gene came from. And we'll be get, releasing a lot more information on what we found. Uh, and like I said, this is, like I'm still not an expert, but I'm finding things that uh, uh, out there that concern me. Uh, and... Uh, it explains a lot about what's going on in our society today. So be advised, this is what uh, what the BT gene really is. Also be advised that it is one of those little crystals is in every cell of these plants, every cell in these plants. Uh, how many cells does a kernel of corn have? Probably thousands, tens of thousands possibly. Uh, you're getting a dosage of this protein that nobody's ever studied. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll throw this quick one in there to you. There was a French research firm uh, when the government and so forth was looking into getting rid of this GMO stuff out of their uh, food source. Uh, they wanted to see uh, exactly what the research had to say about G the GMOs. Uh, and so they had asked Monsanto, to provide them with their research, with their research that showed uh, what this was all about. Uh, Monsanto refused. Uh, this uh, research institute had to end up suing them in, in uh, French courts, and it went all the way through the system, folks, to finally get the order that Monsanto had to release this data to them. When they got the d data, the head researcher made a, after they, they started looking at it, said that they were really amazed. Um, for one, the sloppiness of the research. Gee, there's a shock. Um, that they really did a haphazard job or w using the data that they had presented. The second thing is, was he was amazed at the long-term health studies on humans. It was not. Uh, the data that they used for the long-term health studies on, uh, on this was not from the GMO crops. It was from the BT pesticide, which had been proven over decades to be a very safe product. Now, were they ever testing humans at the levels that uh, eating an ear of corn would generate? No. And even when they did some testing with the GMO uh, product. He was really shocked with the simple fact that they only did a 90-day study, a 90-day study on the long-term health effects of the GMO crop on a human being. 90 days. Let me tell you something. You can infect somebody with a virus and it not show up for 90 days. Okay? Uh, and even that research... Uh, they showed in, in French courts was absolutely flawed and that they violated a lot of the research policies and procedures that are used for standard scientific studies, they ignored them. They uh, did not follow procedures to even do their tests. So it finally led to GMO uh, crops being banned in France. Okay. So be advised, folks, there's long-term studies being done. And in the three decades, they've found 
Uh, a lot of research companies have found that this stuff is very, very hazardous to humans, and they found it by watching your health degrade. Um, and like I said, a lot of folks lean and, and, and hope that the government's going to step in and do something. Uh, let me explain something to you, and this, this one goes back to Roundup. <clears throat> The World Health Organization, uh, just a short time back, through their research, declared that Roundup herbicide as a carcinogen causes cancer. Okay? World Health Organization. The EPA jumped all over that when that report came out and went out and upgraded the uh, chemical classification of Roundup to include the fact that it was a known cancer-causing agent. Then the politicians got involved. And within a very short period of time, that was taken down from the EPA website and the classification was changed back to what it was before. Gee, now, the World Health Organization and a lot of other countries in this world have not changed that classification for Roundup. Just your government. Money talks, folks. And your government has been bought, period, bought. So don't look for them to help. Don't look for the FDA to jump in there. Don't look for the USDA to jump in there. Don't look for the EPA to jump in there. They care not. They, they don't care. And uh, if there are people in that organization that does care, they are politically crippled because you're not going to get the politicians to step up and do anything about this mess. They've been bought. If we're going to change this, we're going to have to change it ourselves by stop buying it, period. That's the only way you're going to stop these companies. Stop buying it. And a warning I want to put out to folks, when you're using these herbicides, study the labels very closely and even go check OSHA regulations on how to handle that chemical. You see people out using Roundup to spray the rows between their garden plants. Uh, this stuff is definitely proven as a, as a cancer-causing agent, number one. Uh, even in U.S. courts, the cases have been won from a lot of agricultural workers who developed liver cancers and kidney cancers and so forth from it, from exposure to it. Folks, this is not a safe herbicide. If you're going to use it, you need a hazmat suit and a respirator. It's that dangerous. But later, we're going to show you the evidence that goes a little deeper than that to where, you know, folks, if you've been eating out of a grocery store for the last 10, 20 years, you have Roundup in you, okay? It's in your system. On that cheery note, this is Richard Tennessee Homestead. I hope this finds you having a wonderful day.